climate change is hailed as a global issue, but not everyone is equally responsible for the harm done to our planet. According to the United Nations, small island developing states are responsible for less than 1% of CO2 emissions, and yet, they are the most vulnerable to the changes happening to our planet. Have you heard of the term green colonialism? Green colonialism is a reference to when developed, industrialized countries export their carbon emissions to poorer, developing countries. This creates a form of international greenwashing, in which developed countries prioritize climate action on the domestic front, but turn a blind eye to harming the environment beyond their own borders. Germany consumes 1.3 billion tons of fossil fuels, minerals, metal ores, and biomass for mechanical engineering, cars, and various electronic devices. Yet, can they hail themselves as climate trailblazers when they continue to export at the expense of another's carbon footprint? In 2014, a Norwegian company bought land for a carbon offset initiative, which consequently pushed thousands of East Africans in Uganda, Mozambique, and Tanzania out of their homes. As both sides of the Atlantic develop their respective climate policies, the European Union is leading in its European Green Deal initiative, and the U.S. is attempting to follow suit with its Green New Deal. They must think of how their policy prescriptions will affect the Global South. Two important sectors that are going to be increasingly affected by climate change in these regions are agriculture and tourism. Developing countries depend on these sectors to make a living. Thinking of ways to deal with these challenges in a sustainable but still economically viable way is crucial. Linking economic need to climate action is necessary to ensure developing countries are still given a fighting chance in the green transition. Developed countries, under the auspices of the symbolic Paris Agreement, have committed to mobilize 50 billion annually to finance the green transition for developing countries. But according to the United Nations, 280 to 500 billion dollars is needed by 2050 in order for effective change to happen. Investing in green infrastructure in developing countries will in turn help Europe and the United States, if it's done right. The EU's strategy for reaching its climate goals depends on the development of green hydrogen. But where will it be getting this hydrogen? Mainly from North Africa and the Middle East. Yet the infrastructure is not in place for countries to be handed this kind of responsibility. The United States and Europe must not rob these countries of their own resources but instead must source green hydrogen in a way that is a mutually beneficial transaction. Africa is often addressed as a singular block, without breaking down the fact that there are 54 different countries that each have their own story. When addressing the green transition, it is important that the developing world is not approached in a one-size-fits-all manner. Addressing climate must harness the strengths and the weaknesses of a country on a case-by-case -case basis in order to provide a truly global cooperative initiative. This is not an easy topic to address, especially when conversations are already difficult to have at a domestic level. But the reality is that climate action is just as much domestic as it is foreign policy. If we refuse to address change from a global, comprehensive approach, efforts in Europe and efforts in the United States will only be a drop in the bucket and will not make the change that we need. There is no lack of great ideas to incorporate the developing world into the sustainable future we want to live in, but it's time to turn ideas into tangible action 